so last class uh, we started with weld metallurgy uh, weld metallurgy we uh, covered the uh, metallurgy for the welding the definition of metallurgy why metallurgy is needed and uh, then we saw epitaxial solidification then we saw competitive growth uh, these topics uh, uh, we covered last class so today we'll uh, uh, talk about the weld defects so weld defects uh, is actually present in all types of welding and of course uh, defects uh, they should not be present but uh, since welding is a much complicated process as we have seen uh, previously also so defects will be definitely part of the welding so the definition of weld defect is weld defect refers to any departure in welded structure or welded joints from the specified requirements which is a fairly simple definition whatever is the requirement if we are not fulfilling that requirement or we are departing from it means other than the requirement we are making something uh, whether it is good or bad if it is not required we will call it as a weld defect we call it as a defect and for welding we call it as weld defect so as per iiw international institute of welding the weld defects are classified into six groups which are given here cracks cavities solid inclusion incomplete fusion imperfect shape and miscellaneous defect one distinction which is uh, sort of needed uh, to be explained that there is a difference between defect and discontinuity discontinuity are the imperfections in the weld and as a rule it cannot be rejected which means is that if a defect is found it has to be rejected but if a discontinuity is found it cannot be straight away rejected if the discontinuity uh, exceeds the acceptable limits for example the size of the discontinuity is beyond a particular limit then we'll call it as a defect and the rule is defect are always to be rejected so this is the difference between weld defect and weld discontinuity discontinuity is a bigger term it may be thought of like that discontinuity is a bigger term defects are part of discontinuities so discontinuity will become a defect only if it exceeds the acceptance limits if the uh, size the location of the uh, discontinuity is uh, beyond the acceptable limit we'll call it as a defect and uh, uh, the defect are to be always uh, rejected so starting with the first type of uh, weld defect which are cracks crack is uh, basically an english word it is nothing technical about it so cracks are the most dangerous amongst all types of defects because welded structure most of the times the welded structure they fail through cracking so the different types of cracks they are categorized on the basis of location and orientation for example uh, this particular type uh, if the crack is along the axis of the weld we call it as a longitudinal crack if the cracks are in a direction perpendicular to the direction of welding we call it as transverse crack if the cracks are beneath the bead we call it as underbead crack here are few more so this is the longitudinal crack in case of a t joint uh, these are the crater crack this is underbead crack or lamellar tear in case of a t joint uh, beneath the bead we call it as underbead crack so in case of t joint if you recall the geometry uh, this is called the toe of the weld if the, in the toe of the weld if there is a crack we call it as toe crack again this is underbead crack this is the root crack so again if you recall the geometry of uh, t joints or i joints so this is called the root of the weld so if a crack is present in the root we call it as root crack if a crack is present on the toe we call it as toe crack if the crack is along the direction of the weld we call it as longitudinal crack if the crack is in a transverse direction in the perpendicular direction we call it as a transverse crack also called as crater crack if the crack is uh, below the bead we call it as underbead crack so crack is the most common type of weld defect cracks in weld joints uh, they occur due to high concentration a uh, concentration of stresses during the solidification of weld this may happen if uh, the parts are held too tightly if there is no flexibility in the part and uh, they are held improperly and too tightly so during solidification when the weld pool uh, tries to shrink it uh, re results into a lot of stresses which can result into cracking the remedies for it formation of cracks can be controlled by preheating the joint if you preheat the joints then the metallurgical changes will not be that much severe the metallurgical changes or the expansion and contraction it will be uniform throughout and the chances of cracking will be less and reducing the cooling rate of course uh, this we have seen previously also if we can uh, control the cooling rate we can control so many of the defects which may happen uh, 
and uh, doing post weld heat treatment after the welding if we heat it uh, then the cracks may be reduced weld defect they are called as cavities cavities may be of three types it may be porosity it may be blow hole or it may be a shrinkage cavity so cavities are basically subsurface defects if it is a porosity uh, most of the times uh, it will be internal defect as is uh, shown over here uh, porosity most of the times it is internal if it is on the surface uh, then uh, we call it a surface porosity chances of surface porosity are a bit less uh, so they are usually subsurface defects in weld joints and are actually voids holes or cavities formed by the entrapment of the gases by the solidified weld metal so whatever is the type whether it is a porosity or it is a blow hole uh, it is due to the entrapment of gases when the welding uh, when the weld metal is in a molten state it is highly susceptible to absorbing the gases so it may absorb the gases but during the cooling or during the solidification if those gases are not released then they may form this type of porosity the major difference between porosity and blow hole is the size porosity the sizes are very small maybe uh, few microns in diameter or maybe uh, 100 to 150 microns few microns in diameter blow holes are much bigger size they are few millimeters uh, they can be as big as few millimeters also they are easily visible blow holes uh, they are easily visible and uh, most of the times they are at the surface so normally porosity is not considered as a serious defect because cracks cannot propagate through the porosity porosity are rounded they have rounded ends therefore they do not aid in the propagation of the cracks therefore porosity uh, are not that much severe of a defect but if the welding is done for pressurized containers if you are fabricating a container which is intended for storage and transportation of liquid or uh, flammable liquids uh, or gas uh, or gases that time the porosity is are not permissible of course porosity being a defect uh, is never permissible but in case of these type of storage containers they become much more critical so we have to avoid it at all cost best way to avoid porosity or blow hole in weld joint is to use perfectly clean base materials and baked electrodes one of the major sources of porosity uh, or the gases uh, which are the cause of porosity one of the major sources are the moisture moisture in the electrode or moisture in the base plate during welding the moisture get converted into vapor and those vapor gases uh, are not able to leave the weld metal and they may result into porosity or blow holes the third type of cavity uh, is called a shrinkage cavity so shrinkage cavity is referred to the cavities which are formed due to shrinkage of the weld metal during its solidification so over here a t joint or i e joint is shown so during welding this is the weld metal which has been deposited but if the weld metal which is deposited is uh, inadequate then during the solidification due to the shrinkage of the material a cavity may form on the welded uh, on the weld bead we call it as shrinkage cavity so how do we address shrinkage cavity to avoid shrinkage cavity we have to make sure that uh, proper amount of filler material has been supplied if the filler material is supplied in the proper amount then even after shrinkage such cavity won't be formed if the filler material is inadequate then due to shrinkage such cavities may form which may further act as a location on which stresses may uh, concentrate and from this point cracks may start so either it uh, it will result into a transverse crack or longitudinal crack and so on so these are the three types of cavities first is porosity as i said porosity on the surface is not that much common but still the sizes of pores are much smaller in case of blow holes the sizes are bigger and shrinkage cavity which we have seen already next type of defect is called a slag slag inclusion which is a uh, very simple to understand slag inclusion means during the welding uh, either the slag which is formed it is not removed properly or uh, the slag uh, before removing the slag it breaks and becomes part of the weld bead so here uh, schematically it is shown here that the slags have become part of the weld bead so uh, the idea is if the slags get entrapped inside the weld bead uh, they will act as a stress risers the stresses will concentrate and the weld bead strength will not be that much so it is considered as a defect of course slags are not visible to the naked eye so for observing a slag we have to do some kind of tests on the weld which we'll see uh, later what are those tests how do we find out whether slag has been included or not so the number and size of slag inclusion can be minimized by maintaining the weld metal at low viscosity if the weld metal is uh, uh, of low viscosity then the slags will tend to float above and once the slags float above we can uh, see it with naked eyes and then we can chip it off preventing rapid solidification if we prevent rapid solidification then the slag particles which are entrapped they will get a chance to rise above otherwise if the weld metal solidify rapidly then the slag will get entrapped uh, 
and maintaining sufficiently high welding temperature of course solidification and maintaining weld temperature is the same thing we have to maintain the weld at temperature so the solidification is not uh, solidification is not rapid and the slags get a chance to uh, rise above and then it can be removed next uh, in the weld effect uh, is incomplete fusion and penetration so uh, schematically it is shown here incomplete fusion and incomplete penetration incomplete fusion means uh, the base metal which was supposed to melt along with the uh, molten weld metal the base metal which was supposed to melt it did not melt therefore the weld bead which is formed is not of the proper size this is called as incomplete fusion incomplete penetration means the depth till which the weld metal should have penetrated it has not penetrated therefore the penetration is incomplete the thickness or the length through which the weld metal should have penetrated this complete bead uh, this complete uh, region the weld bead should have penetrated but it did not so we call it as incomplete penetration the bead size is smaller so incomplete fusion can occur due to inadequate welding current offset of electrode from the axis of the weld if the electrode is bit away from the axis then the heat from the electrode will not be able to reach the this side side of the base plate and therefore it will not melt we call it as incomplete fusion if the welding speed is very high if the welding electrode is moved at a very fast pace then also the heat is not able to uh, reach the base plate and therefore the fusion or the melting of the base plate is improper or incomplete we call it as incomplete fusion lack of penetration also similar uh, reasons are there uh, one of the major reason of incomplete penetration is the high weld speed if the weld speed is very high then also the penetration will not be proper it will result in a built in crack so this sort of thing this sort of uh, vacancy or void in the weld bead it will can act as a crack and then when the weld bead is put into commission when the welded part is used in the actual application it may act as the point from which cracks will start and then the parts may fail so uh, this is the incomplete fusion in case of a t joint so here see this is the weld bead which has been deposited but this portion of the base plate this has not melted so call it as incomplete fusion next up is imperfect shape imperfect shape may be because of various things uh, different types of defects uh, can result in imperfect shape so undercut underfill overlap excessive reinforcement excessive penetration these are the examples of imperfect shape uh, we'll see these things uh, in the next slide also excessive penetration and reinforcement we'll see these things maybe i'll come to the next slide see this is called as undercut undercut means rather than having the uh, complete convex shape of the weld bead at the edges of the bead the weld metal has not been able to flow so this is called uh, this is an example of undercut undercut may happen if the weld speed is very high so if uh, you are using a welding speed which is beyond the designated speed it may result into undercut next up is crack cracks we have seen already transverse crack uh, toe crack porosity also we have seen Uh, uh gases entrapped inside the weld bead and resulting into some bubble formation which is called as porosity or pores then slag inclusion some portion of slag it has become part of the weld bead lack of fusion the edge of the base metal it should have molted it should have melted and became part of the weld bead but it did not we call it as lack of fusion lack of penetration see if you look carefully at the lowest part it did not penetrate completely so lack of penetration suck back suck back means the weld metal which should have penetrated uh, throughout the uh, throughout this base plate but the portion of it uh, did not fill the joint did not fill the joint region rather it formed a concave shape we call it as this type of defect and again this will act as a stress concentration area stresses may concentrate here and cracks may start and then it can propagate throughout the weld excessive convexity too much of weld bead has been deposited and the weld bead shape is more than that is required so that is also a wastage of material and can be treated as a defect excessive undercut say uh, here in uh, adjacent to the weld bead excessive undercut has taken place maybe the welding speed has been too high this is called as overlap overlap means the weld bead they are extending their region whatever uh, region was intended whatever portion of the uh, base plate they were supposed to uh, be present they are exceeding that with the weld bead is present in those regions where we do not even want it we call it as overlap so again another slide uh, sort of summarizes it so this is an ideal weld this is with cracks this is porosity this is undercut this is slag inclusion this is spatter spattering uh, uh, is a uh, major part of smw processes lot of spattering will take place to uh, 
reduce patter the bead to plate distance has to be regulated carefully the current and the wet speed has to be regulated carefully this is incomplete fusion this is incomplete penetration overlap in case of eye joint the same thing these are the undercut and this is the overlap so this completes the weld defects uh, this completes the weld defect and uh, next uh, video we'll talk about different methods of testing the welded joints so we'll uh, find out that there are basically two uh, classes of testing one is destructive test and another is non destructive test so destructive test we break the weld and then find out the mechanical properties but that is not uh, very good uh, very not a very good method of testing because the part is wasted it cannot be used so non destructive testing we'll discuss it in detail what are the different methods of non destructive testing we'll see it in detail we'll see it next time uh, meanwhile you read it and if any doubts are there you can ask me you have my email id and uh, uh, contact number if any doubts are there uh, you can ask me stay healthy stay safe